guys, welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here. And today we're going to do kind of a part two. Now this part two is, technically it's not a part two. It is more of a visual video. Now I have done this pattern on my channel once before, but I got a couple of comments stating that they couldn't see my hands whenever I was doing this pattern. So I decided to do the pattern again. Now, I will not be taking down the other video. I am just going to link this video in that video. Now, I know that might sound confusing, but the reason I don't wanna take down the first video, because I might've explained things a little bit differently in the first video than I do in this video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna redo color pulling. This way you guys can see my hands. And then that way, if I don't explain something correctly and you've already seen the first video, you already know what to do. So let's get started. Now, as I explained before, you're gonna start off with a yarn that you can color pull with. So today I chose blue camo. So the first video will be pink camo. The second video will be blue camo. So what we're gonna do, and I pulled out some yarn so I'm not having to keep yanking at it. And the first color we start off with here, you can see is blue. But you want to find the color sequence because because we're not going to start off with this first color. I can tell you that right now because that's not the true length of that color. So let's see what the color transitions are. You have blue. You have gray. You have a light blue. You have white. And then the white goes back into the blue. And then you go it back into gray. So the color we're going to start with is the gray color. So again, we're going to find where the two colors meet. We're going to go ahead and slip stitch there. And again, if you need help with slip stitching, there is a video on my channel that shows you exactly how to slip stitch or exactly how I slip stitch. There's many different ways of how to do the slip stitch. So we're going to insert our hook like so. We're going to loosen that up a little bit. We don't want it that tight. And then what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet the sequence that we just found. So that's gray, blue, white, blue, and then back to gray. So go ahead, make sure your tension is not too tight. Tension is very important in this stitch. So we're going to go ahead and very loosely chain the sequence. Now there's not a set number of chains that you have to make. You essentially are just following the sequence. And if I'm going too fast for you, please feel free to slow the video down, stop and pause whenever you need to at your leisure. So we're just going to go the whole way through this sequence. Now it's very important that you keep your tension consistent. Uh, if you do not have a consistent tension, which the tension is um, how loose or tight your stitches are. If you don't have a consistent tension, your color pooling will not turn out correct. You will end up with misshapen diamonds. So I would suggest working on this, especially if this is your first time, I would suggest working on this um, when you know you're not going to have to get up for anything because it's a little hard to get back into the groove of having the same tension when you start and stop your work. So we're going to go ahead and continue on. Now this stitch can be done with a number of, and I'm going to stop there because our color just hit the hook there. This stitch can be done with a number of sizes for your crochet hook. It's all dependent on you. I am today using a size five, which I probably should have said at the beginning. I do apologize. I'm using a size five millimeter hook. So now that we're here, take a second to check to make sure you have the sequence. And if you wanted to do the sequence more than once, this is also the time that you're gonna do it more than once before we head up to the next row. So go ahead and stop here, check your work, and we'll meet you at the next row. All right, now that you had time to take that break, we're gonna go up to the next row. So we're gonna turn our work. And in this one, 
we're going to skip three stitches. Now you skip those three stitches. And we're going to zoom you in a little bit so you can see. You're going to skip those three stitches because that's going to count as your chain one and your single crochet. So we're going to skip three. One, two, three. And we're going to single crochet into the fourth stitch. So you're going to single crochet. And then you're going to chain one. Just like that. Now, when you do the single crochet in the chain one, that is what you call your moss stitch. The moss stitch is a very simple stitch. It's literally just a single crochet in a chain one. So as long as you can single crochet, chain one, you are perfectly made as gold. So then what we're going to do is we're going to skip a stitch. So we're going to skip this next stitch and go into the next one besides that. So single crochet, chain one. And we're going to do that the whole way throughout this line until the sequence has met back up again and started again. We may or may not use this entire tail and that's fine. Or I'm sorry, the entire chain because you essentially just want it to go as far as the color sequence will allow you to go. So again, you're going to single crochet, chain one, skip a stitch, single crochet, chain one. And we're going to do that all the way to the end. Now you will not see the color pulling happening right away because you only just started. So you're gonna go a few rows before you actually start to see that color start to pull like you want it to. So go ahead and continue doing this. And when you hit that sequence again, I'll come back and show you what to do next. All right, so now that we're back at this st stage of the game, as you can see, we started off with gray, blue, white, blue, and it's about to start up with gray again. Now, you don't want it to start up with gray as your last stitch. So if you've gotten to gray or whatever your start combo is, go ahead and pull out at least one stitch because you want your gray to color pull. So you don't want it to start on this next row. You want it to start on the row above it. So it should look like this, how my gray is here. And actually, I can pull out one more so that it looks like this. Because you don't want the gray, because if you put the gray on as the next stitch up, it will color block instead of color pull. So you want it to color pull. So you want to make sure that that, is not, that color that you started with is not on your hook. And then when you get to the end of that, you're going to chain two. One, two. And then for your next row and all the rows throughout, you're going to go in between where you skip that stitch. So in between those skip stitches, you're going to single crochet, chain one. And that's how you're going to work this pattern from here throughout. Now you want to make sure your tension is consistent because again, if not, it will not color pull correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and do that the whole way throughout. Now, when you see the color pulling, it won't be until you hit at least the third or fourth row because it's going to be every other row that color pulls. So not every row will color pull. So it's going to take you doing a couple of rows before you actually see the color pull. So go ahead and work your moss stitch all the way to the end. And once you get there, I'll meet you there with, to tell you what to do next. So now that we have started or finished our second round, as you can see, it doesn't look like much of anything right now. So what we're going to do is every time you get to the end of a row, you're going to chain two. Sorry, that was four. Two. Just two. Once you chain your two, you're going to turn your work and you're going to continue working the moss stitch. Now you want to make sure, and as you can see, that color is right on top of this color, which is not what we want. So that tells me I did something wrong. All right, so for row two, 
we're gonna do the moss stitch again, except for this time, we're gonna go in between your stitches that you skipped. So that space between those stitches where you skip the chain space is where you're gonna put your next single crochet. So we're gonna go in, single crochet, chain one. And we're gonna do that the whole way throughout until we hit the end. And by that time, your color sequence should go through one more time. So we're gonna keep going. And if at any point in time you need to stop, start, rewind, pause, slow the video down, please feel free to do so. And now that we've reached the end, remember to chain two, one, two. We're gonna turn our work. And then we're going to color pull. I'm sorry, moss stitch. <laughs> so we're gonna continuously do moss stitch for a few rows. And after a few rows, you should start to see the transition of your colors because working in between your stitches will force your colors to shift, which is exactly what you want. You want your colors to shift. You don't want them to pull on top of each other. So we're going to continue with the moss stitch. And you're going to continue just like that all the way to the end. Don't forget to chain two and I'll meet you there. All right, so now we've reached the end of that row. And again, don't forget to chain your two. And essentially you're gonna do the same thing, just back and forth like a typewriter, at least an old school typewriter. You're gonna do the same thing back and forth and that will give you your color pulling. Now, if for any reason you notice that your colors are stacking, check your tension, go back, check to make sure you didn't forget a chain one because forgetting that chain one will definitely have a huge impact on whether or not your colors actually color pull or color block. Now remember, color blocking is bad for this pattern because you don't want your colors to stack. You want them to pull, which means that they go back and forth. So essentially your colors will be doing a zigzag where you will be seeing the transition going back and forth instead of up and down, like straight on top of each other, which is not what you want. So just continue with your moss stitch, which is your single crochet in your chain one, back and forth. And again, at any point in time, feel free to stop, pause, rewind, slow down the video so that you can work at your pace. Your pace may not be my pace and that's okay. And I'm gonna slow it down on this next row for you just to show you, since my last video, I do apologize again, you couldn't see my hands. We're gonna chain two, we're gonna come up. Now, this is the cool part. This is where you can see things actually happening. Now, if you can see, the blue starts here, but on this row, it's gonna start here, which tells me that I'm doing it correctly because the colors are one stitch off, which means they're shifting, which is exactly what you want. You don't want them to be on top of each other. You want them to shift. I cannot stress that enough. So if you start to see it stacking on top of each other, just know something's not right and you need to check your work. And just like right here, how you see it shift over, that's what you want. You want it to shift over because you don't want it to be the exact same spot every time. So you're gonna keep working that moss stitch until you reach the end. Don't forget your chain two. And then you're gonna 
complete that row and move on to your next row. And essentially, you're going to do the same thing back and forth, back and forth. And by the end of it, you should have an Argyle pattern. So I'm going to let you sit with that. When I come back, you'll see this will be about the size of a dishcloth. And I'll show you exactly how this is supposed to look. But before we do that, because I did say I was going to slow down and I didn't. My apologies. Can't help it, people. All right. So let's slow it down for you. So we're going to go in. Chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, the whole way throughout. Don't worry if you make a mistake, feel free to stop the video and correct your mistakes. You won't get this pattern down unless you continuously practice. So you want to make sure you don't give up because if you give up, then you'll never get the pattern down. And you're not watching this video to essentially give up because you know you couldn't get it. So. want to make sure you get it in between there chain two all right and so for right here it doesn't look like much but as you can see it's starting to shift so you can see this color went over by one and it stopped over by one up here and as you can see the white is starting to shift out as well so I'm gonna leave you with that and when I come back you will see the argyle shape all right, so I completed a few rows just to come back and show you. We can get it out of the sunlight here. We're going to adjust you just a little bit. All right, just to come back and show you what how much I've gotten done so far. So it's only been maybe five minutes. I know, I know, I crochet fast. So as you can see, the diamond shape is starting, and you're starting to get an X here with the gray color. The white color is going out because then, then as it goes out, it will then come in to make the diamond shape. And then on the inside, you'll have the X for the gray. And then the blue will do the uh, same thing on the inside of the white. So if your pattern after, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. So we're going to say this is 12 rows. If your pattern looks like this after 12 rows, you know you're doing it correctly because it's making a V shape here. And then you have an upside down V shape here where you can tell it's going into an X. And then your blue is color pulled in the middle, which that is fine. What you're looking for is the outer colors to go out like a V and upside down V on top of it. That's what you're looking for. So this here tells you that you're doing it correctly. So don't, don't forget to keep your tension consistent. Don't forget to chain two. And don't forget, because one of the things a lot of people forget to do is that chain one after you single crochet into your stitch. So go ahead and work up a few more rows. And again, I'm going to come back after a few rows and show you how much progress I've gotten done to show you what your work should look like after you get to a certain point. So if you need to, feel free to take a break pause the video, stop the video, work on it as much as you want to work on it. And then when I come back, I'll show you how much I got done. All right, so I've gotten to this point. And as you can see, there is a clear outline for the diamond in the white. And then there's a clear X going on in my gray. This is the look you're looking for whenever you're doing your color pulling. So, 
essentially, as you can see, all the colors have shifted over one to the left, one to the right. And when they do that on opposite sides, it creates this argyle pattern. All you do is keep going with your moss stitch. Now, if your pattern by this stage in the game does not look like this, you want to frog or pull out your work and try it again because there's somewhere where you made a mistake. Just remember, you don't want your stuff to color stack or color block where there's a big block of colors and you don't want your colors to shift too much. Watch your tension and don't forget to chain two at the start of each row. If you continue on doing what you're doing, what you will get is the Argyle shape. I wanted to come back and show you how far I've gotten in a few minutes. Again, I'm going to keep going until that gray makes a predominant triangle. And then I will come back and keep checking in with you every few rows to see how you're working and doing on your project. Again, if you feel at any point in time you need to stop, pause, rewind, slow down the video, please feel free to do so. So let's do another row with you so I can show you exactly how um, each, at this point, each thing isn't stacking, but instead of it stacking, it is shifting to another side. So we're going to go ahead and go into this stitch here. And I've already chained two. And then what you're going to do is single crochet into that first space. And again, you're doing the moss stitch. And then we're going to chain one. We're going to single crochet into the next stitch. And the gray pops up. Now, the gray starts here. Let's zoom you in a little bit. Nope, come back. So, so the gray starts here. You want your gray to start here, which is what it's doing. So it's going to start here. We're going to tighten that up a little bit on there. It starts here. And you're going to single crochet, chain one. And we're going to keep going until it changes color again. Sorry, you're hearing my dog lap up water. All right, and then the color changed to blue again. Again, down here, it starts here. So this is where you want that full blue to be. And then you're gonna go until that color is over. And then your white. Your white starts here, so your start on this row should be right here. And this is how you color pull. I do hope that this video is a little bit more helpful than my first video. I do apologize again for the length of time it, take, it took me to redo said video. Again, I'm going to link this video in the first video. And I'm going to link the first video in this video because, again, I explained things a little bit more. And even though through the first few rounds you couldn't see my hands, you could still hear what I was saying. I still think the audio was pretty good. It's just the visual wasn't so hot. So for the visual, you know, you can refer to this video. For the audio, you can refer to that video because I don't talk as much in this video as I did in that video. And I had a lot of good points. And I don't want to have to keep repeating myself or write down the script or something like that. So yeah, so please refer to that video if there's anything you would like to hear explained more because I go a little bit more in depth in that video. And as you can see, I had already changed the color. Sorry, I wasn't looking at it, but I changed colors already on this, the next row. And this gray started before this gray, which is exactly how you want it to be. You want it to start the stitch before your color change or your row previous to that. So... We're going to keep going. Let's see if the next one lines up. We're on blue. Blue starts, actually the blue starts here. But I think we'll be all right. And if you don't think that's okay, all you have to do 
Let's go back here. Tighten your stitches up a little bit. And I'll show you the power of tightening up your stitches and why tension is so important here. All right, so your blue starts here now and on the row, not the row that you're working into, the previous row. It starts here and it's over here. So that's a partial because it's part gray and part blue. So your first blue will start here. So then you have your first blue here, and then not the work, row you're working in, but the row below that, it starts here. So that's exactly where you want it. And that's the power of how you can tell if your tension has changed or not. So you wanna keep an eye on your tension and you want to continue on with that tension here and throughout. I do wish you luck on your project. I hope this is a little bit better. If it's not, please, please feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. I do appreciate those that reached out to me and let me know that they couldn't see my hands or what I was doing. Again, I do apologize for that. So I will link the first video in this video. And then the first video, I will link this video. That way you guys have hands and can see what I'm doing. So yes. Again, if you have any questions, comments, concern, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. I'm gonna continue working on this. And at the end of this video, I will put up a video, I'm sorry, I will put up a picture of the completed triangle after I've gotten so many things done. I might come back maybe once or twice to show you what I'm working or how it's going. But other than that, for right now, this is where I'm at. I'm going to try to get a complete diamond and then I'll either insert a clip or a picture at the end of this. So feel free to take a moment here and pause the video and I'll see you at the end. All right. So when you are color pulling and you get to this far, so I've done quite a few rows in the little break that I took. This is what it should look like. And I'm gonna turn it sideways so you guys have a better view of it. So as you can see, the white made a triangle down here, or a, I'm sorry, a diamond. And the gray also made a diamond. This is the look you're going for when you are color pulling. This is the look that you want as a result. If it looks anything different than this, you're going to want to check your work. But essentially, it's the moss stitch repeated over and over and over again with a yarn that can color pull. Now, there are some yarns that have longer strands of one color and then they like, uh, I think it's called Red Heart Stripes, where it's the one I, I'm memorizing right now is the black one is like a long strand of black and then a long strand of a neon color it might be red heart neon i'm not 100 percent sure but the that yarn can color pull but in a different way so you're going to want to find something like this that doesn't have such they're not quick color transitions but they're very like medium i want to say so this is what your project should look like when you're done Again, if you have any problems with that, please feel free to put them down in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer any question you have. If I don't get to you right away, I will get to you as soon as I possibly can. Either way, that is it for me in this video. Again, I'm going to put up in the eye up there. I'm going to put the first video up there for the essentially the audio part. For the visual part, I would suggest watching this video, but I go into a little bit more detail in the first video. So again, I will link each video in each video. So if you have any other questions or comments after that, please feel free to get a hold of me down in the comment section below. Other than that, that's it for me, folks. I hope you guys are having a great day and continue to do so, and I will see you in the next one.